The Jack Benny program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Let that famous chant remind you that Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Right you are. Yes, sir. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. At 49, American. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what Mr. Elvin Bradley Hicks, independent tobacco auctioneer of Wilson, North Carolina, said. Season after season at the auctions, I've seen Lucky Strike buy fine, light tobacco. Tobacco that gives a better taste in smoke. I've smoked Lucky's for 17 years. Yes, sir. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny is taking Mary to a concert at the Philharmonic Auditorium given by one of the world's greatest violinists, Isaac Stern. As we look in on Jack, he's at home dressing for the occasion. Rochester, I still think they're a little too short. They barely reach my ankles. Maybe I can let the cuffs out. No, if you let the cuffs out, they'll be too long. Liable to drag. Gosh, I wish they fit better. What's the difference, boss? After you put your pants on, who sees your underwear? <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. You're certainly going to a lot of trouble getting dressed tonight. Well, Rochester, all the important people in town will be at the concert. After all, Isaac Stern is one of the world's greatest violinists. Oh, come now, boss. You'll play the violin as good as he does. No, I don't, Rochester, no. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. I do not. Well, I think so. Rochester, you've never even heard Isaac Stern. Well, take advantage of it, boss. Take advantage of it. <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, you know, Rochester, maybe if I had followed my musical career, it might be me giving that violin concert tonight. Me, Yasha Benny. <laughs> I can just picture the scene. As I walk out on the stage, the spotlight falls on me. Me, Yasha Benny. <laughs> Confidently, I lift my violin and tuck it under my chin. I raise my bow. 5,000 pairs of eyes are staring at me. Say, Yasha, you better put your pants on. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, help me. You know, Rochester, it's a little unfair. I have to go through life being a clown, a buffoon, while inside, deep down inside, I have a yearning for the finer things. You could have some of those things, boss, if you just loosen up a little. <laughs> I suppose so, but then, again, you do have to think of the future. After all, Rochester, I haven't got much money. I don't know. Every time I turn your mattress over, Wall Street drops three points. <laughs> Rochester, let's drop the subject and just help me get ready for the concert. Hand me my dress shirt. Here you are, boss. White tie or black? The white tie my tails, too. I haven't worn this suit in a long time. How do my tails look? Pretty good, boss, but you shouldn't have had the tails starched. Starch. Well, I figured it would hold them in place. I know, but when you bend over, you look like a sparrow. <laughs> no, I never thought about that. Come in. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, well, look at our little boss all dressed up. My, my, my. What new drive-in is opening tonight? <laughs> Phil, I'm not going to a drive-in. I'm going to the Philharmonic. Isaac Stern is playing. Yeah? Against who? <laughs> Against nobody. He's a soloist. He plays the violin. You know, it wouldn't hurt you to go to a concert once in a while. 
Never saw a guy take less of an interest in his profession. What do you mean, no interest? You know darn well that I'm a musician. Phil, just because you have a picture of Patrillo tattooed on your chest doesn't mean you're a musician. <laughs> you and that band of yours. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. You've been riding my boys long enough. My orchestra is not as bad as you so unprovocatively infer. Unpro what? Huh? No, you don't. I ain't gonna try that one again. <laughs> No, no, Phil, go ahead. I'd like to see how it comes out the second time. I mean, go ahead. Okay, my orchestra is not as bad as you so unprovocatively infer. Say, that's pretty good. So where'd you pick up that word? Phil. Phil, answer me. Wait till I get this knot out of my tongue. <laughs> I thought it would throw you. Well, it's getting late. I gotta leave now. Meet Mary in front of the auditorium. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Don Wilson. Oh, hello, Don. What do you want? Well, I heard you were going to Isaac Stern's concert tonight, and I was just wondering if you could get a couple of tickets for me. Well, I don't think so, Don. It's been sold out for weeks. Oh, gee, that's a shame. I'd love to go. I'd even pay double the price. Well, I'm afraid it's... You would? <laughs> <laughs> well... No, Mary's probably dressed already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Don. There's nothing I can do for you. Well, thanks just the same, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Don, I want to congratulate you for being chosen by the editors as radio's best announcer. Well, thanks, Jack, but uh, I really can't take credit for that. What do you mean? Well, look at the wonderful material I have to work with. How can I miss with L-S-M-F-T? L-S-M-F-T. But, Don, your diction Lucky has... strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed. Look, Don. So free and the easy diction. on the draw. The diction. With men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. Diction. I've been smoking Lucky's for now to 25 years because they're made of the fire... Don, color. goodbye. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Jackson, what did you hang up on him for? You probably hurt Don's feelings. Yeah, I guess you're right, Phil. I'll call him back and apologize. The lighter, the naturally mild in the back. <laughs> Thank you all for calling me back, sir. Goodbye. Hmm, hurt his feelings. First place, how are you going to get through all that fat? Well, I got to run along now. Goodbye, Phil. So long, Jackson. And Rochester, you can have the rest of the night off. Thanks, boss. When will you be back? Tonight, I only got 35 cents. You can't lose a weekend on that. <laughs> I guess not. Goodbye. Sailor, but he showed up. <laughs> Mary, come here. Who are you talking to? Oh, some sailor. His boat just anchored at Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> well, here we are, Mary, at the Philharmonic. How do I look? Mm, you certainly dress swanky for the concert. White tie, top hat, and a bag of peanuts. Well, I thought you might enjoy something after the show. You know? <laughs> now, let's go in. But, Jack, the main entrance is around the corner. I know, but I gotta go backstage and see Isaac Stern first. Come on. I wonder where his dressing room is. Maybe it's around here someplace. This, this must be it right here. Come in. Uh, Mr. Stern? Yes, I'm Isaac Stern. Mr. Stern, this is Miss Livingston. How do you do? How do you do? And I'm Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yes. Uh, you see, when I heard you were giving a concert in Los Angeles, I sent you money for two tickets, knowing that you'd get me the best seats available. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Benny. I have the tickets right here. Here you are. Thanks. Wait a minute. These tickets are $1.10. I distinctly remember sending you... I did my best, Mr. Benny, but the house was sold out, and they didn't have any more seats available at the price you requested. Oh. So I added 30 cents of my own money and bought <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Mr. Stern. I hope I didn't impose on you too much. You see, you being a concert violinist, naturally, I felt that we have something in common. <laughs> yes, sir. 
we have something in common? Uh, yes, Jack's violin has four strings, too. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary, please. Jack, give Mr. Stern the 30 cents you owe him and let's go. Oh, yes, yes, just a minute. There you are. 10, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. <laughs> Uh, there you are, Mr. Stern. Thank you. Okay, Jack, put on your shoe and let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Stern, and thanks for getting my tickets. You're welcome. Goodbye. Come on, Mary. Tickets, tickets, please. Hold your own tickets. Here you are. Thank you. Stairway to your left, please. Come on, Mary. Oh, Usher, where are these seats? Uh, stairway to your left, please. Come on, Mary. <sighs> oh, Usher. Usher, where are these seats? Yeah, let me see. Uh, row A, seats three and five. You see that last aisle over there? Oh, yes, yes, good. Well, take the stairway right next to it. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Gosh, what a climb. Oh, Jack, I can't go on. Give me another peanut. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, Usher. Yeah. <laughs> are these... <laughs> are these seats in this balcony? Yes, right over here. Gee, this is awfully high, isn't it? We used to think so, but now they can reach us by radar. <laughs> Don't be funny. Just show us to our seat. Just follow me. Here you are. Your seats are right here. Thank you. Say, these seats are all right, Mary. I can relax and put my feet up on the railing. And you better take your hat off. The spotlight will burn a hole through it. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Say, Mary, we may be in the top balcony, but at least we're in the front row. Can you see the stage all right? No, but I got a wonderful view of Catalina. <laughs> That's a painting on the wall. Here, have a peanut. Gee, there's sure a lot of people here tonight. Yeah, this place is certainly... Hey, Mary, look. Look way down there. Isn't that Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman? Where? Way down there below us, to the left of that cloud. <laughs> Ronnie, weren't we lucky to get such good seats? Well, we certainly were, Benita. Well, I do hope Mr. Stern plays the Mendelssohn Concerto. Well, now, let's see. He's going to play a sonata by César Franck. Then, uh... oh, yes, here it is, the Mendelssohn Concerto. And he follows with La Campanella by Paganini. Which one of those numbers do you like the best? Oh, it doesn't make any difference to me. I just came here to get away from chickory chick chala chala. <laughs> that I know he won't play. No, Jack, that isn't Mr. and Mrs. Coleman. I'm sure it is. Oh, Ronnie! Ronnie! Benita! yoo -hoo. Jack, Jack, everybody's looking up at us with their binoculars. Let them look. They're jealous because we know the Coleman. Oh, Ronnie! Ronnie, yoo -hoo. Ronnie, isn't that Jack Benny up there trying to get our attention? Yes, it, it's embarrassing, but don't look up. <laughs> well, uh, maybe we should at least wave to him. After all, he is our next-door neighbor. Benita, that is a situation which the housing shortage prevents me from doing anything about. <laughs> much trouble to attract your attention. He's dropping little bits of paper. <laughs> oh, he's dropping peanut shells. Uh, if he spits, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> oh, what 
What's he doing way up there, anyway? Well, perhaps his doctor recommended a higher altitude. <laughs> Where he's sitting is cheaper than the Alps. Mm. It's higher, too. Yeah, so it is. <laughs> well, anyway, dear, he won't be throwing any more peanuts. Oh, how do you know? I just got hit on the head with the bag. <laughs> Remarkable. He must be using a Norden bum site. Isn't that awful, Mary? I just can't seem to attract their attention. Oh, Ronnie! Ronnie, Benita, yoo-hoo! Jack, don't lean so far over the rail. Ronnie! Yoo-hoo! Yes, isn't it awful? He just won't give it up. I beg your pardon, sir, but I think there's somebody trying to get your attention. No. My attention? Yes, that man up there hanging from the rail by his heels. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You know... Benita, I thought that the horn blows at midnight would keep him home for a couple of years. <laughs> well, then, I guess some people don't know when... Ronnie, what was that thing that just fell in your lap? Oh, for heaven's sake. What is it? A toupee. <laughs> a toupee. Do you think it belongs? I'm afraid so. Look at the laundry mark. <laughs> L-S-M-F-T. And, and look what it says right uh, look what it says right below it. If lost, will find her, please read the lost and found columns in the Beverly Hills newspapers. The article in question will be referred to as a cocker spaniel with a cold nose and a part on the side. <laughs> oh, oh, look, Ronnie. They're starting to dim the lights. Oh, darn it, I almost had their attention. Oh, look, honey, they're starting to dim the lights. Don't get fresh, mister. I happen to be here with an escort. Mary, it's me. It slipped off. <laughs> oh. Well, put your hat on. You look awful. And be quiet. The concert's about to begin. Yeah, here comes Isaac Stern now.
Bravo! Encore! Encore! Bravo! Yeah. Love and Blue! Love and Blue! Yeah. Chickory Chick, Chala, Chala! Chickory Chick! Quiet out there, quiet! <laughs> Ready for your coats, please. Have your checks ready for your coat. Uh, boy, here's my check. I oh, know you don't, Bob. I was a... Ronnie! Uh, Jack, Jack, old boy. What a surprise seeing you here. Yes, yes. Wasn't the concert wonderful? It certainly was, and I loved the Mendelssohn Concerto. Well, I did, too. However, I felt that he had just a little too much pizzicato in the andante. <laughs> uh, didn't you? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Well, it sounded that way by the time it got up to me. <laughs> Here your coach, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, good night, Jack. My best to marry. Good night, Ronnie. Give my love to Benita. I will. Oh, by, by, by the way, Jack, did you lose a cocker spaniel? <laughs> Why, yes, yes. Well, don't worry. Here, Lassie has come home. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Ronnie. You know, Benita, I think that's one of the finest concerts I ever heard. It was absolutely wonderful. Give me a cigarette, will you? Of course, I have some right here in my overcoat. Oh, I had some when I... I say, this isn't my coat. There must have been a mix-up at the cloakroom. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive I had... Oh, certainly, look at the label. Why, this is Jack Benny's coat. Jack Benny's? Yes. Oh, well, tomorrow then we'll have to... Well, Ronnie, what are you looking at? Huh? Oh, oh, it's this address book I found in Benny's coat pocket. Address book? Yes. You know, he's always boasting about his influential friends. Well, listen to this first name. <laughs> Gladys Zibisco, Gladstone 0338. Gladys Zibisco. Mm. Here's a note he's written alongside her name. It says, do not kiss too hard, has pivot to. <laughs> And listen to this next name, Marcella Fink. And then he has in parenthesis, approach from the right, she's left-handed. Oh, he has such interesting friends. Oh, what's that folded sheet of paper that just fell on the floor? Well, oh, Benita, look, it's, it's one of his contest letters. Oh, you mean the I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest? Yes, and there's a little notation on it that says... This letter was written by Carol P. Craig, Sr., and won first prize. First prize? Oh, Ronnie, I wondered what the winning letter was right. Read it, please. All right. It says, I can't stand Jack Benny because he fills the air with boasts and brags and obsolete, obnoxious gags. The way he plays his violin is music's most obnoxious sin. His cowardice alone, indeed, is matched by his obnoxious greed. And all the things that he portrays show up my own obnoxious ways. Now, you know, Benita, that's very clever. Yes, it has such a good thought behind it. Yes. And all the things that he portrays show up my own obnoxious ways. You know, Benita, maybe the fellow that wrote this letter is right. The things that we find fault with in others are the same things that we tolerate in ourselves. That's so true, Ronnie. It certainly is. Isaac Stern was accompanied by Alexander Zakin. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first, here is my good friend, L.A. Speed Riggs. That says it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Of course. LSMFT. Many things may change with the years, but here's one thing you can depend on always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. This fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. 
So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Early fall day, and Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, 49, American. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike, the cigarette of fine tobacco. L.S.M.F.T. 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 Certain facts are plain. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Say, Jack, wasn't Isaac Stern wonderful? Absolutely terrific. Jack... I'll make you a sporting proposition. What is it? I'll break my leg if you'll break your violin. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> After all, Mary, I... Say, wait a minute. This isn't my coat. I've got on somebody else's coat. What? L- look at the label. It's Ronald Coleman. It's funny, but I must have made a mistake at the cloak room. I wonder what he's got in his pockets. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Lori. Mary, look. Isn't this cute? Well, what is it? A yo yo. <laughs> That's sweet. Good night, son. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.